Hi, today we'll be talking to a friend of mine and Sydney-based artist Hussein Sami, whose show Matter and Colour just opened up at Talbot Contemporary in Berlin. So where's Hussein? Hi. Hi, how are you? Hi. Hey, welcome. You You're in your studio, right? This is... Yep, yep, in, in the... Um, in the machine <laughs> where, where it all where it all happens and <laughs> behind you is yeah, yeah. is one of the most recent works from the show Sarah's or well this is a new series that I'm working on at the moment so it's just um uh some silver monochromes I'm I'm making currently um probably for uh something there next year mm -hmm. um but it's just um it's a particular material. It's a little bit different to what I'm, what I usually use uh, in in my paintings. Uh, it's it's something I've been working on um, for the past few months, just getting familiar with the material. And the material you're speaking just, about is, is exclusively acrylic house paint. That's right. Yeah. So sort of industrial um, made and uh, essentially a ready-made material that you know you you pick up at the the general hardware store. Um, but yeah, I mean, in essence, it's, it's sort of formulated to be almost on par with like a plastic. Mm. Um, Do you think that this uh, choice to work exclusively with this medium, does that limit your choice of colors or because I've noticed that, yeah, the, the metallic is kind of a deviation on like your mm. pastel lighter hues that you choose yep. to work with. Can you yeah. speak maybe a bit about why this limiting of color? Well, I, I, early on, I, I just used to use, um, so going back to art school, really just sourcing um, paint from the hardware store would, for uh, mist tints. So it was not, I wasn't necessarily looking for colors um, per se. I was more interested in the material because I was sort of working in a particular way where I was just pouring a lot of this medium onto different surfaces and, and working in different ways and just experimenting completely. Probably the last 10 years, that sort of became a little bit more of a consideration. And so I decided that, you know, I would use that, that palette, that ready-made palette that they provide you at the hardware store. Mm. And, um, you know, sort of all, I suppose the, the majority of it is a kind of really um, pastel, you know, palette, um, a lot of white based tints. Um, I mean, there's quite a few variations now. Um, but I, yeah, I decided, you know, consciously to kind of limit myself to uh, white based colors. And that was primarily more of as, as a function of pouring the paint. It was a lot thicker. Um, I understood how it sort of worked a lot better. Um, with the darker colors, it required more tint. Mm. And it made it a little bit more fluid and, and more watery so that it sort of, it, it ran really quickly when I was pouring paint and it didn't sort of dry in the same kind of way. So it was all this sort of, you know, lear learning of, of, of the material and different colours and, and what it is actually made up of. And I decided that the, the white base was, um, for me, it worked a lot better. It's, not, it's nice to sort of introduce new colours. It's a bit more um interesting when i can sort of juxtapose a lot of these um colors against each other and, and have that to play with it's just more sort of becomes a little bit more interesting for me anyway mm. and in terms of like the actions that it requires to create the skins in particular uh you talk about pouring and uh I don't know, when I was writing the piece, I was kind of making links to Fontana in terms of the cuts that you make or the yeah. cuts that you inevitably have to make on the skins. And, yeah. and also Perino with these like kind of restretched canvases, like yeah. this, these actions, why do you think that, um, well, maybe speak a bit about the actions that are required with the skins as well as like, why do you think that these interventions are really relevant and the surface of the, um, of the canvas is so relevant in the 21st century, like in our kind of, in our world. Yeah. Um, well, a lot of, a lot of the, the works, the early works were, um, 
you know, just sort of made with the, that, that action of pouring. Uh, so sort of just pouring the medium out of the can, just really minimal function. I just sort of wanted to engage in that process as more of a mediator rather than something that, you know, I was sort of more consciously making gestures or, or representation of, it was just more, um, became this sort of this tool in this process. So, mm -hmm. but I really uh, enjoy, you know, revealing some of that um, interaction. A lot of, a lot of the studio processes is, uh, you know, they're quite private, you know, and um, I think a lot of, and, and, you know, some of these activities that I, I, I want to display publicly, they're more of these, um, you know, absurd act actions really, you know, sort of that really test the boundaries of, you know, endurance as well as, you know, uh, engaging the idea of painting as well. So, um, you know, sort of painting with these brushes that I make that are, you know, the, 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 the length of a room and, and trying to actually create something. About that mm -hmm. and talking about, uh, kind of influences or context, like everybody's work has both a local and an international context. And mm -hmm. uh, how, is it, how is Sydney an interesting city for you to work in? And why is this, and why is, how does your work function or operate in, in Sydney per se? Like, and you know, obviously you have a gallery in Berlin as well. And how does that transplant? How do you yeah. feel that that is, um, yeah. And also in the show in, like in our fairs, like uh, yeah. like Dallas, yeah. yeah, yeah. Look, it's an interesting question because it's 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 definitely um, you, you feel you feel a, a distance, I think, from a lot of the uh, you know major art hubs around the world. I mean, we're not too far from Asia, which is one of uh, one of the biggest as well. But um, um, a lot of great artists that you know are always producing work and. I think the time will come when, when, you know, Australia will probably, and the artists that work here will get a little bit more um, recognition and exposure. Um, and we won't have to necessarily go hunting overseas for, you know, galleries. But I mean, at this stage, you know, I think that's still a necessity to, to broaden your audience and, and create some broader context for your work. Um, because that's, I think, you know, we all go to art school, we all learn the same history and yeah. um, we're all talking the same language in a sense. Yeah. And, um, you know, we kind of, we're all talking to a particular practice and with painting, I think, you know, there's a, there's a, a you know, obviously a, a broader and, and longer history in Europe and, um, and in the States. Um, so there's always going to be a, a longing to kind of, um, somehow yeah engage with that for sure mm. yeah I can like because of knowing you and, and knowing the, the the group that we're in and uh like you know with the gallery at Saracotia and I can place you between like you know colorists of like you know late John Nixon and yeah. Haney Amanius and Michaela Dwyer and Andrew Donaldson but how has it been like working alongside and with these artists Oh, I mean, uh, you know, pretty incredible. I think we I was lucky enough to have a lot of those artists that you mentioned as mentors at art school, and and um, you know, after leaving there, you know, still having those relationships, especially with John, um, it was you know an incredible influence, and um, it was so sad that you know he's he's, he's sort of gone, but um, he's he's left such a you know strong legacy with a lot of artists and. And also a connection um, to Europe, a really strong connection to Europe. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Like he, he was one of those guys who, you know, paid that way into, into Europe. And I think, you know, there's a definite, you know, there's a more of a stronger understanding of abstraction in Europe. And, and I think that that's a little lacking here. Mm. So I think that's, um, that's another reason why I think, you know, a lot of, a lot of the good artists do find their way to Europe or, or wherever you, where there is a deeper understanding in the type of work that they make. Um, but, you know, Carla and, and Haney is sort of, you know, you know really amazing um, 
thinkers, you know, with material. I think that, that sort of that, that engagement with material has always sort of been, um, you know, for me, it's a deep interest, you know, of, of how to sort of not think about painting in a painter's way, but think about painting in a sculptor or a, you know, um, a spatial way as well. So it's, it's sort of definitely had an influence in the way I thought about how to go about making work mm. and not necessarily being um, restricted in the way I, I, I did approach it. So I kind of like to, you know, completely turn things on their head, you know, and, and work with tables and, and furniture and you know, mirrors. And, you know, it was, it was pure experimentation at art school. I think that you know, that's the way it should be. You know, I don't think you should necessarily, you know, formulate a way of working that you're going to be working for forever. Mm. <laughs> you know? mm. Mm. Your studio is at home. So you, you yeah. can, like how often are you in the studio and, and oh, every day, you know, doing, doing something every day, which is, which is, yeah, habitual, you know, it's sort of something, you know, I've kind of not been, um, yeah, you kind of can't relinquish that, you know, you sort of, you, you, you kind of learn to do it early on and it becomes part of your life. And I think mm. it's, it's important uh, as a, as an artist, you're always kind of working in a way, you're either working physically or, or, or you're thinking about something. I want to talk about, um, in terms of colour and the colour that you've chosen in matter and colour to paint the walls, I know that this is a, a new venture for you. I did make this link in my text about uh, how they reminded me of quite clinical colours of mm. almost like something out of a hospital, which then brought yep. me to this idea of the skin graft yep. and um, kind of this abjectness that we feel or this distance, especially in matter and colour with uh, the pieces being so big, which is a new thing of yours. Um, yep. The scale of the artworks, they create this distance that we, we must navigate. And... Um, yeah, I also talked about the skin of the milk. I don't know if anyone could see this, but I really yeah. feel like there's this uneasiness about these beautiful kind of uh, enticing colors, but you're pushed away, yeah. you're repelled about how the, it's not quite as it is. It's not the materiality isn't how yeah. it should be in a way. And that's the intervention, yeah. I guess. Well, I think, yeah, I mean, look, it's, it's always, um, it's always a question I get, you know, when people um, look at the works, it's sort of like, uh, I, and I like that they have to conceptually engage with the works in, in terms of thinking about how they're made. I think there's always that nice um, moment when people look at paintings and they have to think about it a little bit harder. Um, I think they have that playful time with it as well, uh, especially with my work and um, because of the sort of, of the undulating surface and there's sort of these ripples and these, these you know, these folds in the, in the material. I mean, they're quite seductive. You know, it's really, um, it is a seductive surface. So, I mean, you can't you can't sort of deny that. And I think it, it, that is in part because of the material itself um, and the way I kind of produce these skins as well um there's some I've, I've put myself in some ridiculous situations with these works it's just kind of becoming a skin <laughs> yeah 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 uh, but i think it, it's 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 that idea about working and that challenge that physicality as well which which has has really um influenced a lot of that performance-based works as well um so there's all this sort of this continuity of this idea about how I work in the space and how I engage with the material and how that sort of relates to painting. And how um, then the actions then become the, the very private actions within that happen within the studio that then are shared. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. And become know. new works. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's about all we have time for. Cool. All right. Nice. All right. Thank you. See you later. Take care. You too. Bye. Bye-bye.
Thank you, Hussein, for answering my questions. And just a small note that Hussein's exhibition, Matter in Colour, is open in Berlin at Talbot Contemporary till the 30th of January.